Hello Gooners, this is the Gooner Vidcast Vodcast Podcast, call it what you like cast, well I'm back, uh, it's been about five days so I hope you missed me, I bet most of you didn't, uh, this is the agenda today, I'm going to flash it too quickly for you to see, because I'm feeling in a, in a funny sort of mood today, well the club's in a funny kind of mood right, Pat Rice is gone, or he's about to go after the West Bromwich Albion game, well, when it comes to send-offs, we can do just as well as West Brom. West Brom sending off their boss, Roy Hodgson, who's taken over the England job. And Pat Rice, um, we, as far as we know, we, we don't know what his future is, other than it looks like he's going into retirement. Uh, he, he deserves it. He's, he's, done a, he's had a great innings at Arsenal, particularly as a player. I remember him fondly from the 70s. Um, he, was, he was in that team that, uh, that I grew to love in, uh, in, in the double-winning year. And uh, yeah, what what a what a right back, very solid, and played all those games for us. And, and I'm very grateful for the services given the club uh, since as an assistant boss as well. Although he has come in for, uh, for some criticism from some quarters, we have to we have to um, we have to pay tribute to the fact that he um, he he took the helm at a difficult time uh, in between managers and and did a really good job as a caretaker boss. So. Um, so thanks to Pat. Um, of course, uh, a, a lot of people at the club are going to miss Pat Rice an awful lot. Uh, I think I think it was time for a change. Um, but but anyway, thanks for the memories, Pat Rice. Uh, you certainly won't be forgotten, that's for sure. Not in the managerial sense, and certainly no way in a footballing sense. So 44 years of great service from Pat Rice, and 500 odd appearances, and uh, at 63 deserves his retirement. Well, coming in. Uh, to take Pat Rice's place is Steve Bold. It's not a controversial move at all. Um, it's probably the right move. I think Steve Bold has the qualities that's re- that are required to be a successful manager. He certainly knows enough about coaching. He's had a great apprenticeship at the club um, by being uh, the youth team manager. He's had some success in that role. And, of course, some, some decent young players have come through while he's been in charge. So let's hope he can continue. Um, in that vein as as um, Arsene Wenger's assistant. Some of us would have liked to have seen uh, the club do something a bit bold, bolder. <laughs> uh, bolder than bold. Bolder than bold would have been bringing in somebody like uh, Guardiola. Of course, the chances of bringing in somebody like Guardiola would be very limited indeed. But you could imagine, with our network uh, abroad, we could have brought in somebody uh, from the continent who perhaps would challenge Arsene Wenger. But it seems to some of us that Arsene Wenger doesn't really want an assistant to challenge him. He wants backing from his assistant. Well, that's that's a fair point. If that's the way he likes to manage, uh, then fair enough. But um, sometimes it's good to have a different voice in the dressing room. Steve Bold's not necessarily going to be providing that exactly because everybody knows him at the club. Although you would imagine his involvement with the senior players wouldn't have been that great given that he was a U team manager but still he's been around everyone knows him at the club even when he was a player he seemed to be getting on with all the tea ladies and so on so so he's the kind of guy that just is ingrained in the club simple as that so it's it's a it's a move that's not going to send shockwaves um radiating throughout the club at all in fact it's 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 a good move from a stability point of view but if we really wanted to if we really wanted to push the boundaries, we perhaps should have recruited from outside. But uh, anyway, can't criticise too much. We'll wait and see how, how this works. The Steve Bold, Arsene Wenger era, perhaps it's going to herald um, a lot of trophies coming to the club next season. I don't think so unless we bring players in. Coming to wit- I'm going to come to that now because Jan Mavilla, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, he's 21 years of age and it will cost us 22 million euros if we do indeed get him, that's 17.7 million pounds. He's apparently ready to sign a four-year deal with us for 60,000 pounds, but it depends who you believe. If you believe Le Parisien, and they know these things, being French, and uh, Yann Mavilla, of course, of France International, uh, Julien Lorraine, and we like that name, don't we, Lorraine another famous right back of the past well Julien Lorraine who um, is a journalist as opposed to a, a football player or should I say journalist um, reckons agreement has been reached with Ren that will bring Jan Mavila to the club uh, for 22 million euros and um, there's been interest in the past from Liverpool and Real Madrid but it looks like he's going to choose our club according to this journalist from Le Parisien 
So could we be getting this, uh, this international with 18 caps for France? Well, according to the Evening Standard, and James Olley, a very well-respected journalist there, he reckons the player's agent has instigated all of these rumours and uh, there are possibly doubts about the player's temperament because allegedly he punched a 17-year-old and, um, well, the allegations were believed by the police because they arrested him. So do we normally sign players that have um, have a, you know, possibly, you know, possibly temperamental problems? Well, yes, we do when we don't do the research. But uh, but if if this guy's under um, investigation, you'd have to say the club will probably veer away from signing him. We may be veering away from signing Jan uh, Vertonghen because he's coming out and saying he really wants to join Spurs. So I'm not so sure. Even though I said in a previous podcast I thought we were going to get him. I've, well, I I claim the right to change my mind. I've changed my mind. I don't, don't necessarily think we will get him. I haven't changed my mind about um, the the forthcoming games on Sunday. Obviously, crucial games. Everton play Newcastle. Newcastle still in, still in the hump for that fourth place. Spurs, Blackburn. Well, that's three points to Spurs, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm so glad I called it wrong uh, the other weekend, as far as Spurs were concerned. Um, but, uh, and with us, I've been saying all along, this would be, even though everyone thinks I'm crazy, um, I, I said all along, I thought this, this would be an easier game than the Norwich game. The Norwich game, of course, proved to be a very, very tricky game. I predicted we'd win it by a single goal, but um, I just, I don't know why. I just, I just thought the West Brom game would purely be easier because uh, Hodgson's appointment as England boss. So I did a bit of research into that about what happens to to England bosses when they're managing two clubs. And the example I thought of was Kevin Keegan. Well, I checked Ke- Keegan's record, and uh, after he was appointed England boss, he managed to juggle the two roles. He was full and boss at the same time, albeit in a lower division. They were in the, the third tier of English football, pushing up at the top. Well, when he got appointed as England boss, they, they kept winning all the time. So, obviously, West Brom... Got a draw uh, last weekend, so not bad form away from home. A point's not bad, is it? If you're in mid table, so they're not. It's not going to be as easy as perhaps I thought, but um, but I still think we're going to edge it. I really do, um, and uh, it's just a feeling I've got. I, ju- I just think and what with Pat Rice, Pat Rice uh, deciding his his time is up at Arsenal. Our players are going to want to send off Pat Rice in style. So what? Well, who's to say that our players can't send off Pat Rice in more style than West Brom, West Bromwich Albion's players can for their manager who's about to join England? I mean, how many of them are going to get in the England team? So they're going to have to do more than play well uh, to get in Roy Hodgson's England team, although we hear that he's very loyal. But that's another story. Anyway, the main thing is we have to get three points. We really have to this time. We, there's, no, there's no more margin for slip-ups. I keep saying it. But um, we had our slip up uh, the other week. I know we're not been informed. I know we haven't won for a few games, but now's the time. We're going to do it. Uh, I'm convinced. But it's going to be. It's really as I, as I put on a previous podcast. I don't think I said it, but wrote it. It's uh, squeaky gum bum time. So until the next time, look after yourselves.